Uh, I'm, I'm going to move to some more company. How about you? Yeah, come on. Let's just talk to some people. You know this face. Oh, look at that smile. I have missed that smile. <laughs> Jane McManus, the pride of Marist College. My boss for a second. <laughs> I don't know if I was ever right? set up a sports I communication know. at Marist College. You hired me for a semester? You hired me. <laughs> you know? Didn't feel also like I was a phenomenal boss, writer. Though. <laughs> Yo, it was, it was fantastic semester working uh, for you, working in your department at, at Marist College. I met a lot of great kids. Will says hi, in particular. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, the whole whole class was great. Whole group was great, and a, a phenomenal columnist for many years. Currently at Deadspin, loving reading your work there. Relatively new career move for you. Um, where should we start with? First of all, how are you doing? How is your family? How are you handling the pandemic? How is everybody doing? Uh, in still in quarantine, kind of sort of. Yeah, aren't, I mean, aren't we all kind of ha- like not quite sure exactly? I mean, I'm not going to raves every night anymore. Like that's been cut off. Um, yeah, but it's different. You know, we're on campus. And so students have to wear masks when they're not in their dorm rooms and the classes are socially distanced. I'm I'm holding my my sports and culture class outside where we can all be together, at least, even though we're all masked and we can have a conversation. But I, I just, things don't quite feel normal. And I mean, I think, I mean, I think that's kind of reflected even in the way we're watching sports, right? Like the ratings are down and I, I think it's still kind of confusing. Things are playing outside of season. So it doesn't really feel like the usual season and, and with college sports as well. So I just, I don't know. I mean, we're doing well, but I think we're all just kind of in this limbo, it feels like, until things are our lives get back on some sort of schedule or track. What do you, what's your take on, on college sports, um, you know, coming back? We talked a lot about the Big Ten's return. Predictably, the Pac-10 has followed suit. College basketball is back. Jane, I just feel like this is such a, a, such a setback for the momentum of the empowerment of historically and traditionally exploited college athletes. It's like... If, if this doesn't prove that they're employees, I don't know what does. They got access to technology and testing that the rest of the student body does not. They don't have a seat at the table when it comes to negotiating and discussing the protocols, and yet they're being put out there to play. It's, it's what are they, we, we care about health and safety in so much as it you know, affects your ability to get out there and make us more money. So just generally speaking, what's your take on colleges coming back in the midst of the pandemic to sports? hundred percent. I feel that it's the one part of sports where people are not able to make truly informed, you know, decisions because they're not paid. They're not able to balance the income versus the risk. And I think one of the things that's been gratifying in a, in a lot of sports as they come back is that players get to make that decision. They get to say, OK, this is worth it to me. I'm going to put the risk. And, and you have football in particular is a sport where a lot of those players are going to have the quote pre-existing condition of a, a high BMI. And that's one of the things that this particular virus really likes is a high BMI. And so I think to put those players in particular out there and say, okay, you're gonna be going out and taking the risk because our economy can't stand to not have college football. We need it too much. Uh, it is, it's absolutely making them an essential worker. I, I feel like there's, there's no way around that. Um, and I think it does skew the priorities of colleges. Like your your priority should be to serve your students. I I didn't. I, I mean, I did, I wasn't sure what to make of the NBA and the WNBA and MLB when they were kind of planning their comebacks, especially when M- with MLB you had so many positive cases and really outbreaks on teams. But they seem to have been able to figure out a way to do it. That that feels like they've hit some sort of status quo on it, and that's. You know, that's good. I'm glad. I'm, I was not necessarily anticipating that that was what was going to be happening. So it's nice to be able to see that there are not a lot of cases coming out of that. College football, you're dealing with like rosters of 100 players, you know, and personnel, and they're all going back into their classrooms, which is the point of having an education. So to me, it just feels like college football in particular and the way that it's come about, it's just the case in point that our priorities are a little messed up when it comes to yeah. who we're getting back, how we're getting them back, why we're getting certain classes of people back and not others. You know, I'm, I, you know, I know, I know you have kids, so you're in the same boat. Like my kids are zooming into their classrooms from their bedrooms. And yeah. to me, it's just like, we need to figure out as a culture, kind of what's, what are our priorities and who should we be getting back and doing that rather than this business had a lot of money so they can afford the testing. So they get to be back. 
You know, that's a perfect transition, Jane, because you talk about those priorities kind of uh, just kind of screwed up. Well, this is a story of impeccable priorities. We talked about it yesterday, Maya Moore. I'm sure you've had the pleasure of, of interviewing her and covering her in the past, uh, whether at, at UConn or in her pro career. Great story uh, about her uh, marrying someone she fought to, to uh, release from prison, free from prison, and just her story overall of taking time away from her NBA career to pursue this goal. Just, uh, just I wonder what, what you thought of both of these stories uh, and the culmination of them yesterday. Right. Well, I saw the news come across like my Twitter feed, like so many, many people probably experienced that yesterday. And I was like, what? Oh, <laughs> it <kinda> like <laughs> made a little bit of sense there, what was happening. And I'm not saying that she didn't do it out of the goodness of her heart and that it was not a genuine connection and that that's why they got together. But it did make sense a little bit that that was, you know, that she felt that kind of ardent way about pursuing um, his in, the injustice that that he was facing, that she felt that personal connection to it and that that made it a little bit more uh, important for her. And I think, you know, anybody who's ever fallen in love with somebody or been in love with somebody or felt like someone was wronged or felt a connection like that, it, you know, it does add a little something in the way that you are thinking about it. Um, so that was kind of my mind was like, oh, yeah. Oh, OK. That makes sense. But um, but I think, you know, she is somebody who I and I did cover her when she was at UConn. I do remember I sat down once with her and her mom for an interview and um, they both struck me as like just two of the coolest people that I'd oh, ever yeah. encountered. Oh, yeah. And so for to see this happen, I mean, not surprised, you know, not surprised that it would come from her. And I remember thinking with her, like, even as I was sitting down, the, uh, you know, those years ago, thinking, you know, this is a woman who is bound for something big. Like, she's going to make a mark. She's going to be doing something huge. I don't know what that's going to be yet. Is it going to just be basketball or is it going to be more than that? Because she just, I, there's something about her. There's like, a, she has a, a presence that I think is, um, that's impressive if you're, if you're in her, in her company. So I was not surprised. Um, I'm glad to see, you know, she's so happy. You can see how oh happy God, she yeah. is in that interview. Yeah. She's glowing. Uh, before we let you go, Jane McManus, um, Quick question, what, because, you know, the professor in me is curious, Michael's in, in academia as well, what, you mentioned your sports and culture class, what's the conversation that you guys are, are honing in on right now in your sports and culture class before we let you go? Well, to, to this morning we had class, we talked about fans and um, fan culture, and so we're, we're kind of following along with uh, this textbook that was written by Andrew Billings, and it's a great book, but I have to see so much of it is obsolete now in the moment of COVID, because our ability to be fans has been disrupted, right? Tailgating is different. Gathering together in community is different. Going to bars is different. Sitting in the stands, like if you can do that, that's different too. So all of these different rituals that we used to have around the way that we consume sports has completely changed. And I, and I know that, you know, some people have, have kind of taken that interest online. I mean, you know, speaking of Russell Wilson, my fantasy team does start him. So I feel, you know, I got to jump on that one. But, um, you know, it's just that the so the whole a lot of a lot of these rituals and cultures are kind of moving online, but that's not quite it's not quite the same. There really is this physical gathering, I think, that goes around sports. And that's part of why people really connect with sports and their communities. And um, that whole thing has changed. And so we are having um, Kavitha Davidson and Jessica Luther to discuss their new book on for Saturday's awesome. class uh -huh, about um, loving sports when they don't love you back. Awesome. See, that's why it was so much fun to work with you at Marist last semester. I learned a lot. I had a good time. So good to see you, Jay McManus. Thanks for joining Brother from another. I, my, my sister from another mister. Thank you for joining. <laughs> that's right. Another. Thank you. That's Thank right. you, Jane. Thank you. Anytime. Come back anytime.